diamonds in the rough. NFL Draft Diamonds. Time to shine. Hi, my name is Jimmy Williams with NFL Draft Diamonds. And today I have with me a diamond in the rough. Uh, his name is Karan DeLentz. He's a defensive back out of East Tennessee State. Um, how you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great about yourself. Uh, doing very well. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Give me like a brief uh, background of you and your story and kind of get us uh, up to speed there uh, with you and your experience at uh, ETSU. Well... To start off my little story, you know, I, I came from Phoenix City High School of Alabama. I played I played corner and wide receiver. I was number one wide receiver for like in my nation in my eighth grade and ninth grade. So after that, I switched to play defense my tenth grade year. After that, on the Jamie the Boast, that went everything changed for me. So going from there, I ended up becoming a three star and landing some SEC offers, ACC offers. Uh, but I'm I changed my mind. I wanted to go smaller than that because I wanted to start for a new path for myself. So I ended up committing to ETSU. I got committed by ETSU from Tory Bush. Tory Bush, um, he gave me a chance there. After he um he left after my freshman year, but my freshman year, that's when they wanted to try to play around with me. I so I played just straight nickel and corner and field. I mean boundary corner that whole year my freshman year. After that, that when Randy Sanders showed up, and he was my new head coach, and me and him, that that man smart. So I ended up playing field corner and nickel, and sometimes I played safety. It depends on where the call was, but they trusted me to move around a lot because we had to move around a lot against other people. Sure, I mean uh -huh. obviously, uh, you know, I introduced you as a defensive back. I mean, I'm trying my best not to pigeonhole you one way or the other. Um, I do feel like a lot of uh, teams may want you to go back to that nickel role. Does that sound fair? Does that sound like, you know, something you, you – If a team uh, want me to go play nickel for them, i tell them I love it. Tell them I, that, that's why I've been wanting to play this whole season anyway. I hey, love it. That, that sounds just, just fine. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, obviously, you know, um, you said that you made your way out there to ETSU. Um, tell me what makes – ETSU so special. I mean, um, obviously yeah. you chose to go out there. Um, talk to me just a little bit about uh, that school and that program. It's crazy because it's basically like a dream come true. Because when I when I went to ETSU, I had a mindset of we gonna make history here. We are gonna change it. And the guys I met there, like Tyree Robinson, Quay Home, Tremont Shorts, like that's more than I can play. Like Jared folks, we all had a we all had a vision. And then now, you, as you, everybody can see, we actually made history with the program, being one of the best ETSU teams that come through there. So it was all like a dream and like a plan that we had since before we even came out of high school. We just met some strangers at on a visit, and then we all came up with a vision that fast. So that's why we it was just connected so well, just a bond that I just thought I needed to have. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you're talking about some studs out there uh, for your program. I mean, um, uh, you know, s some of those guys are, you know, making making the jump to uh, the pros like yourself. Um, yes, your your offensive line buddy, I want to say he's in, uh, he's trying to transfer to a bigger program. Which, <laughs> dude, I know he's gonna, he's gonna right I know he's gonna make it. I know he's gonna make it. Make somebody, you know, uh, really proud and you know, uh, you know, obviously do some great things. Um, uh, let's talk about you a little bit more. Um, I mean, obviously, we talked about you, uh, you know, maybe at the nickel position or, or, or playing out, uh, you know, out wide at, at, at corner um, and then maybe even some safety. But um, I want to kind of hear from you. What do you feel like is like uh, the best part of your game and maybe what separates you as a prospect? Hmm. To be honest with you, what separates me as a um, prospect is basically. My speed, my speed is, is a big key of me because it, it, my key been a big key of me since, since forever, still to this day, because I played gunner. I used to make, I'm um, on ETSU, I was gunner for the COVID season and this season. I made a couple big hits and stuff. I got um some turnovers. 
Um, I did punt return. I was I was good at blocking. I and I also can return also. But this year we I wanted my um Elijah. I wanted Elijah to keep returning because Elijah was actually good at what he was doing. And I told him I actually tried to take that spot in the league. So I did that punt return. And I also did punt, punt. Well, what is it? Punt block, punt return, um, field goal block. So I was really a good special team person as well. So I say it was just I was my my greatest skill would be I was smart and I grabbed the concept of the game real quick, and I just I know how to think on the go. So they they love that about me because sometimes some stuff ain't wouldn't run in the play, but since I just know football so well, my my IQ so high, I was able to make up for something they didn't even know was there. So yeah, yeah. I say that was my biggest three. Yeah, I mean, and you know, uh, I I gotta stress uh, really like. Uh, your speed. I mean, I really think that your speed is key, you know, for what you bring to the table because like um, scouts love that, man. Scouts love that when, you know, you get a guy who's like, um, dude, I know you're running probably a four, four or better. Like, you know where you are right now with that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure like four, four is an easy check mark for you. I want to, I feel like I can hit a four, two, four, three, like uh, everybody at my school for the past two years is saying four, two. So when I go to the combine, that, that's what my mind on four two four one. I'm now I'm 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 planning on amazing all the scouts for my speed, and after that I will take everybody else by my skills and everything else that I got that they probably won't even know I have. But I got a plan. I got a plan. <laughs> sure. And and for people that don't know you and your history, I mean obviously um that that's no joke. I mean um you know getting in the four threes is no joke. I mean I I feel like that's certainly attainable for you, maybe even faster, like you were saying. So, um, I do want to kind of backtrack a little bit. I mean um obviously you were talking uh very briefly about the COVID season, uh COVID season really being for the small schools a a big deal in 2020 because I mean obviously. Uh, weren't able to play or or play as much as perhaps maybe you wanted. I mean, uh, talk to me about 2020 for you. Um, maybe what you did, how you stayed focused um, and motivated during that time while you were waiting on, uh, you know, football. Well, for for 2021, like I'm not gonna lie, I was I just love football so much. So it really didn't matter when we was gonna play. I was already ready. So after they told us we were just gonna have a season, it was just we was already in the weight room. We stay in the weight room yearly. So I'm always getting getting bigger, working on myself, getting work, staying fit. So it was just babies is just exciting. Like the season went well. I prepared myself. Like we played this year. We just played comfort game, but at the same time, we only lost. I think we only lost two games that game that year. I think it was Furman and Mercer. They were the only two we lost that season on off off on COVID year. But it was it was great, honestly. We got to play against the same team. We got to actually fill out more team, see more of what they have before we actually play on during the season. So and then that allowed us to get better um bonds with our teammate. That's why our team this year was so great after after the COVID season. Because everybody on the team is like family now. So that's why I that's why I say Kobe season was probably one of the best things we had because it brought our team closer together. Right. And of course, like you were saying, I mean, obviously, um, you know, uh, you know, coming together, getting closer, that's one of the things that really COVID ended up, you know, doing for a lot of teams especially. So and then of course for you guys, um, again, like you were saying, you know, from the top, I mean, uh, really putting ETSU uh on the map. Uh, really having a phenomenal season, uh, you know, getting uh, as, I don't know, so far in the playoffs. People never expected you to go as far as you did. I mean, you know, getting, uh, I think it was quarterfinals or something. I mean, until you finally, you know, uh, you know, had to step away uh, with a loss. But, I mean, obviously having just a phenomenal year uh, there, uh, you know, what what do you, what do you guys say about this year, man? And really, just kind of your overall accomplishments, uh, you know, there for that program. Well, I know, I know, I did a lot coming here. So, my accomplishment really was I did one of my accomplishments. I beat the SEC team. I always wanted to do that, and then 
I, I went out in style with my interception, 99 yard interceptions, touchdown. So that's before I knew that they had a penalty flag thing. Ain't nobody tell me this shit that we were doing penalty flags for time. But Coach San- but, but um, Randy Santa, he laid a slide. He was like, he was like, you didn't know, I didn't scratch it to you, so I'm gonna let you have that one. I said, who? So my life was saved. Um <laughs> more than other than that though, this season, well, my goals were just basically try to not let them throw the ball mostly my way this year. And that kind of basically how it went this year. Like I probably got a couple targets, but after that, they I really had to just take on the run or just backpedal. So that was one of my biggest goals right there. Just just make sure they don't throw away, throw to my side for real. Just know that they just respect who I was on that side. And that that basically what a lot of teams did this semester, this um this season also. They just really didn't throw it my way. And when they did, they had to like zip it or some stuff like that. So that really made me feel like my game was getting really more up because it's one thing to have high school coaches respect you, but when you have college coaches respecting it, not throw it your way, that means you really like you really become one of the top corners in your in your conference. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, you know, you were talking about beating an SEC opponent. Um, I believe that was Vanderbilt, wasn't it? Yes, sir. I mean, was- so obviously, you know, um, you know, they brought you in. They thought that they would be uh, make you guys into their whooping boy because they try and bring in these cupcake schedules. But you guys certainly weren't that this go around. I mean, <laughs> obviously, you uh, you laid it into them and gave them an L, which is awesome. I mean. Um, and you, you got to cheer for, you know, uh, you know, guys like yourself. I mean, when you get that opportunity and then hopefully, you know, uh, you know, you know, win, get a huge win against an FBS opponent. So um, mm-hmm. yeah, what's cool about that is that puts you, you know, on a, a bigger stage so that people will get a chance to, uh, you know, see you and the rest of your teammates and, you know, hopefully give you that opportunity at the next level. Yes, um, sir. So, uh, Karan, I mean, I, I want to talk about this because, again, we kind of, you know, uh, chatted about it. Um, really, your speed, uh, speed kills, man. Um, and there's, and that's one thing again that scouts will um, really enjoy about you and your gameplay. Um, and a lot of that really stems from your experience as a track athlete. Um, yeah, obviously. Um, you know, Star Trek athlete in high school, but also uh, on the track team there at ETSU. So um, and tell me a little bit about your uh, track and field experience um, overall, and then maybe how you feel like that has helped you as a football player. Well, growing up, I didn't, even, I really didn't even want to run track, even though how fast I was. I got kind of pushed into it by some of my friends growing up. But as I kept going, though, I am having two, I got three records in Alabama right now for the 200. Okay, that's my favorite race to do is 200. I got, I broke the record in the 60 meter dash. Uh, I still got a record for that one. And I also ran a 46 and a 400. So it's a lot of stuff, you know, with track, like it just brought a lot of stuff out of me. So in the 60 meter, when I broke the record, I ran a 68, 684. Mm. And then my fastest 200 time was a 21.09, but it really was a 20.8. They talking about the win. But, you know, you got to just let them have it. They they can have it. It was my senior year. I let them have it. I broke the record anyway. So, yeah, I'm in a record book twice for that. And then transfer over to college. I kind of kept my confidence because in my head, I always felt like it wasn't nobody faster than me. If you're faster than me, you have to show me. So going to college, you know, I had a little difficulty there first with the 60 and stuff. But I ended up still winning the 200, like I said, because the 200 is my favorite thing. And people don't know it, but I, I'm a long jumper. I, I can jump long, too. So my my junior year, I jumped to 24, 24.9. And that was just right coming straight out of pre- – um, that was coming right out of um playoff. I didn't have no practice with track or anything like that. I just came straight from off the field and went to a different field. And then I guess it was just in me to just jump that far, so – I can say track, it did a lot with me. It helped build my body even more up and how football would. It just gave me more extra accolades, stuff I can use during my game for football as well. So the speed came and played a good part. It helped me with my jumping, helped me with my endurance. 
Like when a lot of my teammates be tired and stuff, I got a lot more energy left in them because that all I do is run. So it just it helps out. It helps out a lot, you know, like putting them two together because people want to know how much track actually can help with football players. But when you do use it the right way, track can do a lot and keep you in shape and everything throughout the whole offseason and everything while you're not playing football. Yeah, I mean, most definitely. I mean, I know occasionally you'll get these uh, players that, you know, just kind of strictly focus on football. And, no, I mean, that's all well and good. But, I mean, sometimes being able to uh, also participate in another sport like track really helps. I mean, really helps build up your speed. And, you know, we think about things like, um, you know, being explosive, you know, at the snap, you know, being able to, uh, you know, make jumps. Um, you know, high pointing the ball, that sort of thing. Um, and, and really, you know, even for a guy that's that's your size, I mean, obviously not ideal size, but I mean, being able to jump uh, with the best of them really, uh, you know, kind of takes away that whole like height disadvantage because, I mean, you are able to, you know, run with the best of them, jump for all those balls. So, I mean, you know, we don't have to worry about that so much in, in with you in your game. So, um, that's one thing about ETSU love. That was one thing I did love about my coaches. Like Coach Brown, Coach Steve Brown, I can always say that that would be my favorite DB coach because he trusted me over not along with my size or anything. He trusted me. He just trusted me. Like I could be on the goal line with a six 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 seven wide receiver, and I'm five ten. So they they already knew what could be the outcome. All that they trusted me within all this whole year. The past, actually, the past, the whole four years I've been here, nobody ever caught a um, fade ball on me. So, <laughs> I, I I don't know why, but I take my fade ball pride very serious because as a small corner, you got to know what's your, what's your most weakness spot at, like what people love to attack folks that smaller than them with. And that's, that's one right there I, I want to try to make everybody regret doing. <laughs> no, that's that's just fine. So, um, I, I do want to hit you with uh, – you know, maybe just a couple more questions. Um, uh, we are, you know, kind of, you know, getting to the point where we need to eventually close up here soon. Yes, so um, I, I just kind of want to know a little bit more about uh, this this cat, uh, you know, Karan DeLentz. I mean, uh, talk to me a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Uh, tell me, uh, you know, maybe who you are, your, your hobbies, your interests, um, you know, anything uh, unique about yourself that you want to share. Well, anything unique about myself, well, I can say one thing I am always doing, I'm always am thinking of a better option. So one thing about me is I always see stuff of how it is, but at the same time, I always see if I can always make anything better than how it was, like it's supposed to be. I always have time to do that. Also, on my free time, all I do for real is either work out with my friends or I watch TV, or I watch anime, play the game. Other than that, I'm being very productive with my sports because, like, I love nothing. I don't, like, really do nothing else with sports. I've been doing it my whole life. So I sit here, I probably talk and stuff. I go outside, play with my little brothers. Or I go play with my mom and stuff. Because my mom a big fan of football, too, so I play with her outside. Other than that, I'm doing – if not, I do yard work because I feel like anything else that can help me because since you keep getting stronger, I keep doing like farming and stuff. So I always think of yard work and stuff is like getting stronger also because I'm just working. So other than that, other than, and then one more thing, um, DoorDash. DoorDash. <laughs> so just, I love, I reason why I do DoorDash is because some of the people usually you recognize your face. So they be like, oh, you play for. So it's just, it's just a great thing to get contact, get out in public with um, the people that you just always be around. Like, I love the fans and the support from the um, the people around it, um, Cheryl's on everything. So, kind of make it just great to just do outside jobs sometimes so we can get back to the community. Great. I remember from the written interview that you did with Draft Diamonds last season, one of the things that you wrote down was that you were a big Naruto uh, fan. <laughs> so, uh, you you still you still watching that or have you moved on to other anime? Um, I'm on his son right now. Okay, Naruto always. So I'm on Boruto, but I'm really on to different animes right now. So I'm really on like Demon Slayers and probably um Reincarnated Assassin. So it's it's like a lot of different animes out now. I'm just trying out right now. 
hey, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, obviously, if that's, you know, uh, something that you like, you know, part of your character a little bit. Um, uh, really quick, you got, like, maybe a favorite movie or TV show also that you watch, I mean, other than the, some of that anime that we were talking about? Maybe a movie? Uh, it's hard, because I, I watch a lot of movies. Oh, I know what I can say. Um, Spider-Man. I'm a big Spider-Man fan. Marvel. Gotcha. Don't tell me I, anything about like the new one because I haven't seen it. Yet. I just about so, to say I go to watch that. I just watched um, that yesterday. <laughs> oh my god, I got so much going on. I just haven't been been able to watch it yet. So um, all I'm gonna uh, say is ten out of ten. That's what I'm gonna say for you. Ten awesome, out of ten. Awesome. Can't wait. Can't wait. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, as we wrap up, um, I want you to take the opportunity and I want you to, uh, you know, look at the camera. Address all those scouts that uh, you know you you want to reach, and let them know what kind of a player you would be for their program if they took a chance on you. So uh, go ahead and give uh, all those scouts your pitch uh, as to why they need to bring you in. Go for it. Uh, first off, first off, I'm named Karan Delance for a reason. It's a unique name. I'm I feel like I'll bring a lot of speed to y'all camp. Amaze a lot of y'all, and also just because of how I look, don't mean you can judge a book by the cover because I ain't prove a lot of people wrong by how I look. So I just say, you just take a shot, let me walk through the door. You feel me? You just see how everything fill out, and I promise you, I, I would never disappoint none of y'all because I never have. This is all I've been doing. So I say, let the best go against the best, and let me show you who really is the best. Awesome. That's all. So, I mean, obviously, like we said, I mean, um, a guy that could run with the best of them, you know, a guy that could, you know, put down, uh, you know, SEC opponents, you know, really knows how to be a winner. You guys really developed an excellent program there at ETSU. I mean, and Ooh. obviously, um, you know, again, like we were saying, I mean, you, you've got some speed that um, is really elite and people really need to uh, stand up and pay attention to that because, I mean, it's really going to take you places. So, um I wish you best of luck moving forward. All right, bud? Yes, sir. Sure. Once again, I have with me uh, Karan DeLance. He's a defensive back out of East Tennessee State. Uh, definitely check him out.